So although this project's called Where Where Wedgie and our main focus is wedge-tailed eagles, we're actually really interested in some of these other birds and we'd really like to get information on them if we can. First of all, we'll cover the falcons. So we've got four species of falcon to talk about. First of all, the brown falcons are probably the most common falcon you're gonna see. Yes, I see them a lot on, on poles, like electricity poles, they're, they're sitting on the top. Yeah, but yeah. how can I be absolutely sure that's a brown falcon? Well, even though they're called brown falcons, they're mostly brown, but there's a lot of variation in their colouring. So it can be a little bit confusing. Mm. They can be quite pale sometimes. Uh, but their most distinguishing feature in general is a, a teardrop that just comes down by their eye. So that's Falco Berigora. Secondly, we've got the Australian hobby. Oh, you'd be lucky to see them, wouldn't you? Well, you do see them quite often, well, not often, but occasionally on posts, a bit similar to your uh, brown falcon. Um, they're a much smaller bird. They have like a, a dark hood on with a white line that goes behind their ears. Falco longi penis, <laughs> that's long primary feathers. The penna is feather. So there's another species that's really quite similar to the hobby, isn't it? Another falcon. Yes, so the peregrine falcon, which is a bigger bird, really powerful. It's quite distinguishing because it's got bright yellow feet and a yellow, this patch of skin just behind their beak called the seer. That's bright yellow as well. And there's another falcon, isn't there? Didn't you see that a lot last year? On Cape Barren, yes. Yeah, the nankeen kestrel, which is one you were a bit less likely to see. Um, but you might see it and it's a small little falcon um, just about the same size as the hobby um, but what it does a lot is hover which is beautiful it just stays still in the sky just looking down at the ground just fluttering its wings so the nankeen kestrel that's falco centroides so that's the falcons now what's the difference between falcons and hawks Falcons are very streamlined, agile predators, very aerial, so their wings are very pointy. And then the hawks in general have got much more rounded wings and they're much broader. So they can, they're similarly sized and they can still very effective hunters, um, but they're adapted in a different way. Mm. We'll start with the really pretty one. Oh, my favorite. The gray goshawk. Which is actually white here in Tasmania, yes, isn't it? Yeah. Do you get any grey ones at all? I don't believe so. I mm. think they're all white, mm. yeah. Which is the only all white raptor. It's the only one. All goshawks are accipiters, and this one is Accipiter Novae Hollandiae. So closely related to the grey goshawk is the brown goshawk. Yes, which is very similar to the grey goshawk, except brown, unsurprisingly. Same sort of size, same kind of shape. Um, but I find the, uh, the difference between the juvenile and the adult really quite confusing. They look like two different birds to me. Yes, yeah. So the adult, both male and female, have got this orangey bar across the front and then a greyish back. Whereas the juvenile has got speckles on the front and it's kind of all brown. Um, so yeah, they look really different. And of course these occipiters, they're, the male and the female are really different um, sizes as yeah. well, aren't they? Yeah, so the males are much smaller than the females in the, the hawks. So that's occipiter fasciatus. So the next bird, and this is where things are the most confusing in terms of identifying raptors, is the collared sparrowhawk, which basically looks like a miniature brown goshawk. The sparrowhawk has a very square tail and the brown goshawk is round. So that one is Accipiter cirrocephalus. We're going to get bigger now and to a bird that is really quite commonly confused with wedges if we're not careful, mm. the swamp harrier. Yes. Uh, if if you're, you're doing a survey called Where Where Wedgie, you really want to see an eagle, but you've got to be careful that it's not actually a swampy. Yes, so they are a bit smaller than a wedge-tailed eagle, but when you're looking at a, a bird far away, it's difficult to tell how big it is. But one of the most distinguishing features of a swamp harrier is its white bums, the base of its tail feathers. There's an obvious white spot that stands out. It's white rump. Right rump on. is the correct, not bum, but you know. Um, and then also the shape of the tail. So a wedge-tailed eagle has a diamond-shaped tail, whereas uh, the swamp harrier has quite a severe round edge to it. And that is called Circus approximans. Now even bigger, we have the white-bellied sea eagle. Oh, beautiful bird. But the most distinguishing feature is, of course, that they're big and white, predominantly white. But, but <laughs> the young birds have a lot of brown on their front. They which, can look really, to yeah. the unexperienced, they can look a lot like a wedge-tailed eagle. They can be quite brown and they have a bit of a point to their tail. Yeah, so it's just kind of getting that extra close look at it. Um, the 
tail isn't as long as a wedge-tailed eagle tail and if you have a good look at a perched bird you of course have the wedge-tailed eagles wear feathery trousers and the seagulls have their shorts on. And that one is Haliaetus leucogaster which means white belly leucogaster. This survey is also covering the sulphur crested cockatoo and both corella species. Uh, there's the impression that these species are increasing in number um, so we want to look into that and also it's really worth giving any old white bird a good look because it might actually be a grey goshawk. Now the sulphur crested cockatoo has a lot of white on its body but it also has quite an obvious yellow colouring on its underwings under its tail and of course the yellow crest on its head. These cockies are also identifiable thanks to their rather large head and short tail Silver crested cockies are bow winged with very erratic deep flapping while they fly and they love to screech so they'll be quite noisy. So you might look at a flock of what you think are silver crested cockatoos but look a little harder and they might all be corellas or there might be a mixed flock you get a, a bunch of species all together. We've got two species of corella in Tasmania the little corella and the long billed corella and they're quite similar at first glance uh, they've both got a large, neat head. The little corellas, you might see a, a short white crest on them. Um, they've got subtle yellow underwings, both of them, and under the tail. Uh, the little corella might have a slightly longer tail than the slender build, but uh, then neither of them particularly long. Uh, the wings are somewhat tapered, and they've got steady, strong flapping. Um, when they're alarmed, they act a little bit like pigeons. They've both got blue around the eyes and some red in front of the eyes. Uh, but the long-billed corella is distinctive because it's got obvious crimson front on its face and usually a red bib. And particularly because of that long bill, which is really quite extraordinarily long. And uh, you can even sometimes see it when they're flying. We've got the one left, the wedge-tailed eagle. I'd really like to talk about a question people ask me all the time, which is about the wingspan, the length between the two wing tips when they're stretched out. The biggest confirmed, it says confirmed, but it was from the 1930s, I think, where a bird, a female bird, that was two meters 84, which is wow. huge. We, the typical birds that we see are more around 190 to 240 is the biggest one I've measured. Okay, 240. So Just still taller than us. So here it is, the Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagle. This one sadly isn't alive. Um, it's a female. Uh, we can tell that because she's bigger. The males are much smaller than the females. And we also know that she's a young bird because around her head you can see this really light coloured feathers and then also all the way down her chest she's got a brownie colour. She's not dark. The adults are really, really dark. So around the back here is where we can see the most distinguishing feature of wedge-tailed eagles, the tail. So we can't see right now because the eagle's perched, but if it was flying, the tail would look really long and wedge-shaped like a diamond. So even if you're really good at identifying birds, sometimes you just don't get a really good view. And of course, some people who are taking part are brand new to this. And in both cases, it's really appropriate to be very accurate in what you're seeing. It's actually really important for the survey. Uh, so only record to the level that you're sure of. If you weren't able to clearly identify the bird, um, an identification of something like eagle slash swamp harrier is completely appropriate. It's much better for the science. Um, as you can see from some of these pictures, it can be really challenging to identify birds at a distance. Remember, wedge-tailed eagles are really hard to spot, so the chances are you might not see one. But the important thing is you get out there, you have fun, you do the survey and you tell us what you see.